So later on in his life, he gets stoned to death. <laughs> so buzzkill there. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm Jordan Burke. And I'm Kristen Priola. And this is Saints and Sages. <laughs> Where we talk about the wisdom of the saints and how it's relevant for you. And I don't know why I put emphasis on sages because we're not talking about a sage today. We're talking about saints. Actually, plural, two saints, which is something we've never done before. Well, you had emphasis on a different syllable, but you definitely had emphasis. (laughs) So we'll give you that. All right. Today, we're talking about two saints in particular. I was very fascinated when we started digging into their stories, but... St. Timothy and St. Titus. We're going way back. We're going way back. So far back that if you're not familiar with Timothy and Titus, they were disciples of St. Paul, who, if you're not familiar with St. Paul, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you because you should be familiar with St. Paul. But St. Paul Bible. <laughs> yeah, was a disciple of the man himself, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. And if you haven't ever thought about the lives of St. Timothy and St. Titus, the awesome news for you is that you can just go ahead and flip open your Bible right now and check out letter from St. Paul to St. Timothy and St. Titus right there in the Bible. You know, I didn't think about that, but that's Boom. a good point because we've had past, you know, we've we've talked about on some of these past episodes like, hey, look, we pulled as much info as we could. We don't have a ton. <laughs> This is what we got. It's oral tradition. Like St. Philon was one of those. This one, we have literal the word books of God. in the Bible. <laughs> so we got kind yeah. of lucky on our on our research here. And but. fun fact, according to tradition, Paul wrote the two letters, as you see, um, letter to uh, Timothy, number one and number two, and then to Titus as well. And they are the only two letters of the New Testament addressed not to communities but to direct people and so that's that is, something it's actually really important we'll get into that here shortly but why it is addressed to timothy um and and we'll talk about that and you know let's just talk about it you want to start with timothy and then let's we'll move it. on to titus Saint so, timothy. timothy his name is greek and it comes from or it basically means one who honors god timothy was mentioned six times in luke but paul as you had mentioned writing him letters mentions him 17 times that's, that's a pretty big deal um, Timothy was ordained and ba- or rather baptized and ordained because you have to do it in a particular order by St. Paul and uh, Paul calls him one of his closest disciples in, in further you'll see when we dive into scripture that Paul really referred to Timothy as um, like his son and in fact he calls him my son I mean that's how close they were which is really really kind of fascinating which was probably really meaningful for him especially since his father was pagan so you know coming from the greek background although his mother was jewish he was kind of born into a uh, family that was torn uh, religiously so having a father figure in saint paul must have been really meaningful Mm. for him just in his upbringing and being able to relate with him and connect with him on all things central to jesus and christianity that's a good point i hadn't considered that but that's a really good point that's a really good point um when we dive into scripture we find passages from like first corinthians 4 17 where it says for this reason i have sent you timothy my son whom i love who is faithful to the lord you know the emphasis on the relationship and um the emotion involved in that relationship which is fascinating again because this was you know we're we're moving kind of quick through his life but timothy became a disciple of paul right and what we're seeing here and what really kind of jumped out to me was that Paul was taking Timothy and raising him to his status, if that makes it, to the status of Paul. He says, my collaborator, my son, my co-worker, these, these phrases that he uses, which is fascinating when you, when you think about the fact that Paul was one of the 12, right? And, and Paul is saying, hey, he's with me. We're at the same level. In a really honorable position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so in uh, Philippians 2, 19 through 20, I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, that I may be cheered when I receive news about you. I have no one else like him who will show genuine concern for your welfare. So that kind of gives you an idea of how Timothy operated in his heart and his for, you know, for people and for, for this mission. I, you had Yeah, and Paul believes so confidently in Timothy that he even says in Scripture, 2 Timothy 1.5, I am reminded of your sincere faith, 
a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois mm -hmm. and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure dwells in you. Yep. I love that because she, he had confidence in Timothy and obviously believed in him. And isn't that just the best when you've got someone who really believes in you, especially so close to the source, you know, Jesus Christ himself? Um, that would give me a lot of courage. I just and and we really need to emphasize that Paul was one of the twelve. <laughs> he walked, spoke, ate with Jesus, and now this disciple who ultimately founded the church is saying, "Hey, you're you're with me. You're my son. I'm sending you to do these special missions." And then writing to those people ahead of time and saying, "Hey, the person I'm sending you." is my son. He's really important. He's my co I think in yeah, Romans 16:21, Timothy my co-worker. My co-worker, right? <laughs> this is a younger guy. Timothy is younger than Paul. But the status there, I mean, and, and these things are important especially in that time, you know, why we mentioned it in the past where no words were wasted back then. There was no like flippant. Like everything, especially in scripture, was chosen for a purpose. The wording was specifically chosen. Everything was very purposeful. So anyway, I, I hate to keep harping on that, but it's, it's no, it I love that you're highlighting this aspect of his journey because that's not something I've ever pondered before in that close proximity to one of the apostles. Timothy yep. had the assurance, not only the assurance of just following someone so close and intimate with Jesus, but St. Paul was a really epic guy and he had a lot of passion, a lot of fervor, and he encouraged Timothy regularly. Even yep. when he was like in prison, yep. he was writing this letter and that would give me so much like zeal you know i'd be yeah. like really built up ready to go like let's go evangelize because i've got paul behind me yep. and i think that really just reveals what you're talking about here this uh, uh ability to have confidence in our god through other people collaborators yeah. in the mission yep. to love god and love others yep so later on in his life he gets stoned to death <laughs> So buzzkill there. <laughs> yeah. So bringing it down. And he was killed because he refused to worship a pagan god. Um, something else really interesting. Cause I, I, did you, if, well, I don't want to jump too far. Ed. Did you have something else on Timothy? Or are we good to move to Titus? No, really, it was just that he kept traveling with yeah. Paul. He was highly esteemed by those that he encountered all throughout. He followed him a lot in yeah. different ministry um, cities. So... Did you see, this was like my random tidbit that I found. I was like, I don't, this has nothing to do with anything. But I'm not going to sit, where is it? I want to put it in here because it's interesting. <laughs> St. Paul wrote to Timothy and says, stop drinking only water, but have a little wine for the sake of your stomach. <laughs> I read your, that this and morning. And your frequent illnesses. At first, Timothy 523. He's the patron saint of stomach disorders. Actually, they both are the patron saint of stomach disorders. But I just love that. That was also interesting because it was, <laughs> it, it shows you two things. One, that. Timothy was human. He had frequent stomach issues. And as mm. someone who suffers from frequent stomach issues, I can I can feel his pain. But also kind of like the fatherly care of St. Paul. Mm. Like, hey, dude, stop drinking only water. Have a little bit of wine. You need to chill out. <laughs> <laughs> and I wonder if the translation is there very clear in that or if we're misinterpreting. But that is really encouraging yeah. because so often us... I don't know, Christians can get really caught up in like, I got to serve. I got to yeah. be holy. I got to be righteous. You know, and then it's just like, relax. Yeah. You Calm also have down. to breathe. You also have to take, take care a of yourself. breather. Yeah. It's going to be okay. God's got you. So number two of this mission, um, I guess technically Combo. trio. Yeah. There you go. You know, trio. Yeah. Is St. Titus. And St. Titus is fascinating because he was actually a convert from paganism. So his whole family was pagan Greek. Yeah. yeah. And he's a, he's also a younger guy. I believe Titus was actually younger than Timothy. Am I correct on that? Mm -hmm. Or am I, am I, I think you're right. Any? Okay. Um, someone can correct us if we're wrong. But he also traveled with St. Paul on missions. And what was really kind of cool about St. Titus is that he had this huge conversion. And when St. Paul made him the Bishop of Crete, Crete was in a, it was in a bad spot. So they were part of what Paul had set up, but like they had gone off the rails. And so basically Paul told Titus, Hey, I need you to go back and, and, and take care of this because Paul considered Titus as a peacemaker. He was very good at like, where, where I, I read at one point where Paul was like really stern, appropriately so, of course. Um, authoritative, maybe? Authoritative is probably a better way to say it. Uh, Titus was really good at kind of coming in there and like smoothing that road. So if people <laughs> Gentle, got, maybe. Yeah, if people got riled up from what Paul wrote, Titus would come in and kind of say, yes, that's true, 
let's and then you know whatever whatever it kind of paved to, the way paved the way yeah. after Which paul really dropped all the bombs of yeah yeah <laughs> truth yeah 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 yeah, that's really beautiful. And he also was given the task of bringing Corinth, the community, back to obedience, which just that in and of itself sounds really, really taxing oh, and very yeah. difficult to bring an entire community back to obedience. Because imagine coming in and not having, I don't know, you maybe having the authority because of Paul's authority. You mm -hmm. know, people might have that trustworthiness because of his hearsay and just the authority of jesus christ anyway what i'm getting at is that's a big to do yeah and it and the fact that paul was able to trust titus his companion with that is really a big list like that's a long list of things okay like i've got to bring these people back not only to tradition and what they were originally taught but also the new news the good news of the gospel jesus christ and so that's kind of a radical transforma transformation for this community. Oh, yeah. And I could imagine that being just a really big task. <laughs> well, and I wanted to quote Franciscan Media, who wrote, when Paul was having trouble with the community at Corinth, exactly what you're talking about, Titus was the bearer of Paul's severe letter. And was this is kind of what I was talking about before, where mm. Paul kind of, you know, dropped truth bombs. But he was severely telling them, hey, you're, you're out of line. You can't do this. So he gives this letter to Titus. Titus brings it, this this letter, and then they say, and then Franciscan Media writes, uh, so he bears the letter and was successful in smoothing things out. Paul writes he was strengthened not only by the arrival of Titus, but also by the encouragement with which he was encouraged in regard to you. As, so we're quoting scripture now. As he told us of your yearning, your lament, your zeal for me, so that I rejoice even more. And his heart goes out to you all the more as he remembers the obedience of you all when you received him with fear and trembling. So like they knew they messed up. They knew that Paul was dropping bombs and Titus was able to go and just make peace and, and correct the wrongs, which is really kind of cool. And I wonder if this is why this is just me speculating. So in scripture, it says in Titus three, three, for we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy hated by men and hating one another. But then the goodness and loving kindness of God, our Savior, appeared. He saved us, not because of deeds done by us in righteousness, but in virtue of his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal in the Holy Spirit, which he poured out upon us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Mm. And I love that he states that, Paul, to Titus, because he reminds him like, hey, you know what? Us too. We were once sinners. Yeah. You know, and we're walking with you, Corn, through this. Yep. We were with you on that. We were acting stupid and foolish and dumb. And how authentic is that? Well, I love that honor. What's and the what's just the how real they are? Testimony is the most powerful mm. tool of evangelization. Mm -hmm. It's true. I mean, that's what that's exactly what they're doing. They're giving their their testimony, and to this day, that remains true. Testimony true. is the most powerful tool of evangelization. So your anyway. stories are important. It's true. It's very true. Your stories can actually set people free. And I, I am a, um, uh, a unworthy but uh, thankful participant in some of that. Because someone was honest with us, right, mm -hmm. about their story. And through their honesty and vulnerability, it gave us, or I can speak for myself, it has given me perspective on who Jesus, the person of God, truly was and who he is. And that transformed me and it wasn't sugar-coated. Yeah. It's always not sugar-coated, you know, yeah. with like, oh, I kind of felt really great, but I still, you know, I sinned a little bit, but now I've through Jesus, I've been transformed. No, it's like the real nitty gritty. Like, no, I was stuck in my sexual yeah. passions or, you yeah. know, I had temptation and was addicted to X, Y, Z. And any, now I've overcome through Jesus. If, if anybody's <laughs> you know? listened to my testimony, mm. it's out there. I mean, that's exactly what that is. There's no sugar-coating. It's, it is you know, I'm not salacious at all because that would be a sin, but I'm very straight to the point. Like, this is what I did. This is how I screwed up. And this is what it happened. And what, what happens every time someone's like, ah, okay, I see, I see. There's a change. It's possible. You know, that sort of, that sort of thing. But I don't want to get too far yeah. off the rails. So That's cool. I just, you know, peacemaker. And it's interesting because he ends up dying a natural death at the age of 94 and uh, according to tradition, he was a virgin his whole life, too, which was uh, kind of an interesting, uh, interesting tidbit. Now, 
Did you have something? You know, I just was thinking that is interesting and that just shows how much confidence even more so that people could have in him because of his purity and mm -hmm. virginity and choice to be holy in that way because that's a that's a high call yeah. to be celibate. Now, I was lucky to find something pretty cool that I wanted to share in regards to uh, Timothy and Titus. Pope Benedict the 16th actually wrote a pretty neat letter regarding them. And I have a, a couple bits and pieces that I want to pull out of there. But um, and it kind of gave the theme, so to speak, of, you know, the modern day, like, how, how is this applicable to our lives? Like, OK, they were bishops. They they combated uh, heresy. They were like they were with a disciple. But what does that mean to us? And what I pulled out of it, at least for me, is exactly what St. Benedict wrote, which is, as the closest collaborators of St. Paul, Timothy and Titus show us that we too can be rich in good deeds and thus open doors of the world to Jesus. But more specifically, he wrote, it clearly appears that he did not do, he as in Paul, did not do everything on his own, but relied on trustworthy people who shared in his endeavors and responsibilities. He's talking about collaboration. He's talking about friendship. He's talking about fulfilling mission with other faithful people. And it's exactly what you've said multiple times on this podcast. Saints run <laughs> in packs. Not only as we're often referring to it as a support system, which it is, but an evangelization system where, yeah, of course, we should have other holy people to help us because we're constantly in spiritual battle. But we should also have ho holy people around us to help further the mission, further the mission of the kingdom. And that's exactly what Paul did. I mean, he, he got these two guys. They became his disciples and you know set the world on fire and accepting that need for interconnectedness our our acceptance that we need each other is so part of god's mission right we are not able to share everything that god has just solo me or solo you yeah it is up to the body of christ and god made us for community we're not meant to be isolated we are not meant to be alone in that we have to work together that's part of god's plan is for us to be collaborators unless you're called to be a hermit and i don't think that that's they're still collaborating with us they though, are still collaborating through prayer yeah yeah which is so cool and interconnected i don't know if you guys have ever had this moment when you're thinking about someone maybe you're in prayer maybe you're not maybe you're just going through your day and you're like yeah this person came to mind like mine today this morning was actually hannah meeker i was thinking about hannah and i was praying for her and i was thinking about her hoping that we could connect soon and y'all lo and behold after i got out of prayer i saw a text from her and i really do think that the lord connects us with people in that sure. way to think about them and to pray for them brings us to mind have you ever been woken up in the middle of the night and just thought man i really you had someone on your heart and just like pressing on your heart to pray for them and maybe they called you the next day and were like if i woke up in the middle of the night and someone was pressing you. on my heart i'd call the cops <laughs> thank you jordan for that <laughs> perspective <laughs> I think, William, stop, like, leave me alone. <laughs> I don't know what even Jordan Burke. But um, you know what I mean? Like, it's really beautiful how the Lord connects us as a mystical body of Christ is all I'm getting at. Yeah. Um, we can be dependent on each other in prayer. But yeah, even the monks, they're collaborators yeah. because it's part of God's plan. He wants us to realize we are totally dependent on him. Without him, if he stopped loving us, we would be gone, vanished from existence. And it's through him that we were able to operate and do anything. Um, and so that's our, like, I don't know, our foundation for a lot of what we do here at Avila, I think, is recognizing that we are nothing. God is everything in that total, just that, I don't know, poverty of spirit and humility, recognizing we can't do anything on our own. It is through the grace. And when we cooperate with that grace and with each other, we're able to be amazing missionaries like St. Titus and St. Timothy, yeah. who who were little humble people. Like, you know, they didn't know when they were born yeah. coming from a Greek pagan background and well, Greek and Jewish background. They and didn't so know. then in terms of collaboration, not just being humble in spirit, but think about who your your friends are. Mm. And, you know, I'm sure we've touched on this in the past, but are they helping you get to heaven? Okay. Are they helping you fulfill your mission? That's that's more along the lines of what we're talking about here. St. Paul didn't just surround himself. He was on mission. On mission. So who did he surround himself with? 
people who further that mission. That's the collaboration. So who, who do I spend time with? You know, who do you listeners spend time with? What's your mission? Are they helping you further that or not? And I would say if they're not, then, you know, you can love them from a distance, you know, but you got to discern appropriately. Hey, is this person, I, I have this thing called mission versus distraction. Are they part of the mission or are they a distraction? And that's not to say that people are bad because that's, that's not what I'm saying at all. But if you have been put on this earth for a purpose and we all have been put on this earth for a purpose, that's a fact. We all have mission. We all have vocation. Some of us may not know what that is and that's fine. But we all have it. That's that's undeniable, irrefutable fact. What are you doing to fulfill that? And then now look at who are who are your collaborators? Who is around you? Who are you giving your time to? It seems the more I go, the older I'm I'm getting, which is such a strange phrase to say, but the older <laughs> I'm getting, the more I'm looking around and thinking, ooh, I'm running out of time. Time I'm running out of time. How am I utilizing this time to fulfill the mission that God has put me on this earth for? And I'm really not interested in spending time with anybody who is not helping me further that mission. That's not to say that I don't love people. Again, just to clarify, that's not to say that I won't talk to somebody. I'm not, you know, there's no talk to the hand. There's none of that garbage. You love everybody as you're supposed to. But who is getting my time? Mm. Who am I collaborating with? Those people are the ones that I want to I, I want around me investing yes those are the people I want to invest in there, there's a phrase that I love it's be a value add it's uh this Navy seal I stole it from but his his thing is always you need to be a value add you need to add value to whatever you're doing whoever you're with yes but you should also have people around you who are a value add because if you're being a value add and your buddy's being a value add then they're adding value to you I've said that word far too many times hopefully you get the point <laughs> Right. You get what I'm saying. I think I do. Yeah. Yes, Jordan. And thank you for sharing that. Um, it's true. And our friendships are so important. This is a place that we off that I often go back to of like, OK, Lord, who have you placed in my life that you long for me to be invested in? And am I actually fulfilling that yeah. am i actually loving them well am i serving them well or am i distracted by the surrounding people the acquaintances that are actually like yearning for my attention but that's not what god is calling me to and that's okay to have that boundary and to be honest yes. in those relationships that Healthy are boundaries. not yeah yes. um a part of god's mission for you to serve his kingdom and serve it well like so there are moments in life where it's okay to just be right like I don't know about you, but if you are close in proximity to Jesus, then you will have a transformed, radical perspective of life. So Just true. like St. Timothy and St. Titus did because they were close in proximity to St. Paul, who was close to Jesus. Yep. They changed their whole life trajectory. Like as if St. Titus was born thinking, yeah, I'm going to be the bishop for Corinth and Crete. Yeah. Like, no, yeah. <laughs> he wasn't thinking that when he was yeah. ready as a kid. But because he was absolutely transformed he spent time with people who cared about the same heartbeat of god as he did and then he went out and so i love what you're saying here and pope benedict the 16th really wrapped it up well with collaborators yep. you know and friendships that are meaningful and not only meaningful but purposeful um with with the love of god that is it's immeasurable and we can't like you can't ignore it once you once you've seen that love or experienced the love of god it is just permeable no. in everything that we do and so if you're that person and you're like well wait a minute i don't know if my friends actually have that same heartbeat mission definitely take it to prayer like go before the lord and sit with him and say like lord do i need to actually exit some friendships and if i do how because that sounds really hard yeah do i need to invite new people in my life do i have spiritual mentors like do i have a spiritual director do yep. i need one should i get one yes <laughs> um and just like bring those fears and those thoughts to god he wants to hear about it well i'll tell you this too in terms of you know what you just said there's so many messages that i've gotten from people who say listen i'm having people leave because i'm taking my faith seriously and it hurts and i'm like you know what i get it it does hurt but you're fulfilling mission and they weren't for whatever reason a part of that and that sucks and that's hard but you're doing the right thing and I, there's this goofy phrase that I love. It's um, those who mind don't matter and mm -hmm. those who matter don't mind. 
right? So our, again, it's it goes back to there's all these goofy phrases in my head. I don't know why. Yeah, I, where are you? I don't like know where these come from. Or <laughs> quote where, real. Where, yeah, like hold on to them. But um, the whole point of that is, if you're struggling with, hey, are these people gonna stay? One of the easiest things you can do is just fulfill your mission, and and in some cases they'll fall away or they'll join, because if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, if you're following Christ, things are gonna fall into place. So I hope and, that makes sense. Yeah, it does. And run confidently. Yeah. Run confidently towards Jesus. He will set things in motion for you. It's just trusting him yep. and accepting when it really does hurt when you lose a friend that you yeah. thought was actually your friend, but maybe they're not. Yeah. And maybe it's time to let them go. I didn't realize that this conversation about Saints Titus and Timothy was going to be about friendship, but I'm loving that it is. Because I wonder if Timothy and Titus were friends. They had to have been because, I mean, they're I running so. around in the same circle. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. They were missionaries together. Yeah. Well, let's definitely go out and make disciples of all nations, just like them, yeah. and to truly evangelize authentically and to love Jesus radically. And I know I'm just saying like a bunch of things, but I mean it genuinely. Mm -hmm. I really do. All the adverbs. Fulfill, <laughs> You've got quotes. I've got adverbs. Fulfill your mission. <laughs> be a value add. You know, figure out who your collaborators are. Loving and, God. And set the world on fire. Absolutely. Not literally. Okay, maybe fire every the, once in a while, if you light, light your Spirit. candles. Yeah. <laughs> you got a fireplace. I'm jealous with real wood. Are you jealous? Yeah, I love real wood fireplaces. Fires are great. We need a bonfire. That's a good idea. I think we're getting off topic. Maybe probably a little. Start, I'm starting to lose my voice anyway, so we should probably kill the show. Thanks for listening, y'all. Yeah. We love for you to email us at saintspod at myavala.com. If I can say your email, that's saintspod at myavala.com. You can send us your feedback. Uh, you can rate us if you like on iTunes. Uh, rate us five stars. It's a huge help. Yeah. <laughs> Give us five stars. Or don't, just don't. If you don't, just yeah. kidding. If you but don't like thanks. us, that's, you know, sorry, but don't give us a rating. <laughs> Bye. Bye.